So last week we talked about rounding with scientific notation, um, and today we're going to talk about how to write numbers in scientific notation with more than one significant digit. So what we did last week is we would round it so that we only had the digit in the very front. Um, today and tomorrow we're going to talk about what to do if you have more than one digit. Um, so just a quick definition, scientific notation is when a number is represented as the product of a factor and a power of 10. So it would look something like this. Um, the factor must be between 1 and 10. So they're talking about this very front number. Um, it should only have one number in front of your decimal. So it's got to be larger than 1 but smaller than 10. So this first digit can't be a 0 um, and it can't be two digits. That's only one digit before your decimal point. Okay. Um, what we talked about last week is that this exponent told you how many zeros you have. When you have um, more than one decimal, I'm sorry, more than one digit, that's not necessarily the case. But what it is telling you is how many times to move your decimal place. So if I have something like this, where I have a power of negative seven, this means I have to go left seven times. Okay, this is going getting smaller and because it's negative. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is where my new decimal point is. So then I would write a 0 in every one of these loops. Okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros in this case. So when it's a decimal, this is how many zeros you have. When it's a large number, it won't be all the time. Sometimes, but not all the time. So that's really what it's telling you to do, is how many times to move your decimal point. So this number, I actually want to rewrite it because this decimal point shouldn't be here anymore. It's actually this number. Okay. So all of these have more than one digit, and we're not going to round today. Okay. No rounding. That's the new part for today. So what I like to do is remember our very first number has to be larger than 1 but smaller than 10. So it's going to go after your first number that's not a 0. So in this case my arrow is going to go right there and I would draw them and I think they're helpful. On this example my decimal point is going to go right in between 3 and 2. And this one, it's going to go right after 5, because that's my only significant digit. Okay, so how I would write this is I would have 1.73. Okay, that's going to be my factor in the front. Then I'm multiplying that by 10 to the, instead of counting the zeros, you count the 7 and the 3 also, everything after this arrow. So you would have 3, 6, 7, 8 digits, okay? It's really tempting to put six because there are six zeros, but you need your seven and your three to count also. So there's a total of eight after that decimal point. Here, this one would be 3.2. And then from my arrow to my decimal point, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So negative six because it's a small number. This one is like what we were doing last week. So this would be 5 times 10 to the 4th. Okay, so you have four zeros after your arrow. That exponent is 4. Okay, a couple more examples. Here my arrow goes right after my 2, after the first number that's not a 0, right after my 5, in between my 3's here. So this one would be 2.5, and I have to count my 5 with my zeros. So that would be times 10 to the 7th. Okay, not the 6th. The 5 also counts for a total of 7. This one would be 5 times 10 to the negative 3rd power. Okay, because after my arrow, it's 1, 2, 3 to my decimal. And then... This last one would be 3.3. .3. 
And then from my arrow to my decimal is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So negative 7. Okay. So this is doing the opposite. We have to rewrite these. So negative 4 means I'm going to go left 4. So I take my decimal and I go 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, you do need to rewrite these because if you don't, your answer technically has two decimals in it. So this is your final answer. This top part would not be counted right on a quiz. You would lose a point. You have to rewrite it so that you only have one decimal in your answer. Here, since this one is positive, we're moving to the right. So this 7.9 goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's only four zeros, okay? That nine is the first one. Okay, so 790,000. Six times 10 to the seventh, since there's only one digit, it will be seven zeros. So 60 million. All right, um, so really the big difference here is the nine takes up one of your zeros, so then you only have four. These, this one, you have three zeros because the first one is moving to the other side of your three. Um, you have to be more careful. It's Since there's more than one digit, um, this isn't just how many zeros you have anymore. Okay, another one, this one. It's going to move 5 to the left. Negative is left. So you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's four zeros between your decimal and your nines. And again, you do need to rewrite it. This technically has two decimals in it. All right, last one here. We're moving 4 to the right since it's positive. So you'd have 12,850. Okay, but it was only one zero because the first three jumps are the two, eight, and five. And again, you have to rewrite this one because this one technically has a decimal and it doesn't in your final answer. All right? A dog has 100 female fleas. What is the total amount of blood consumed by the fleas each day? Express, express your answer using more appropriate units. Okay, so a female flea consumes about 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth liters of blood each day. And we want to multiply that by 100. Okay, now 100 is the same as... 10 squared, okay? This is a 10 with two zeros, 10 squared, all right? So you wanna take, these two have the same base. If we look at just this piece, they both have a base of 10 and we're multiplying powers. This is why we talk about scientific notation with exponent rules. When you multiply powers, you add your exponents. So this is 1.4 times 10 to the negative third power, okay? Okay, I could rewrite this if I wanted as 0, 0, 1, 4, like that. Okay, liters. Now, it asks us to express your answer using more appropriate units. I would say that we want to use milliliters. Milli means 1,000. Okay, this is a prefix, it means a thousand. So a thousand milliliters per liter. So if I take this times 1,000, I get 1.4 milliliters, and I don't have to write it in scientific notation at all anymore, okay? This 
goes away when you change from liters to milliliters because you're multiplying by a thousand, which is the same as 10 cubed, and then these will end up canceling out. Okay, 1.4 milliliters. All right, your assignment is a worksheet today, so you'll just need to show me your notes to get your assignment.